On this episode of the Procedurally Generated Show, Tony hunts monsters and Ethan learns about the Precursor Legacy. We talk about the week's biggest news and answer your questions. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome to the Procedurally Generated Show. I'm your host, Tony, and joining me this week, I've got Ethan. Hi, Tony. <laughs> that was that was Andrew. Okay, not judging. <laughs> it sounded like he was practicing his Mario triple jumps as he ran through the... Got it, got it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on the internet forever now. So what's well, that's fine. Whatever. So what's going on, Ethan? Did you know today is the two year anniversary since AOL discontinued AIM? I did not know that. Yep. It is a sad day. Pretty sure it was Of course. Well it says my my thing says two years ago, but I don't remember the last time I actually used Instant Messenger. Well, I used it up to the last day, I think. I'm almost certain I couldn't have even logged in if I wanted to because I wouldn't have remembered my information. Well, it's aim. You just make a new one and go with the flow. Well, I guess it's true. But then I wouldn't have my contact list or anything like that. Make a new list. Eh, that's too much work. It means you have to talk to new people, and I don't want to do that. Uh, new people. So, well, I apparently am fighting off the effects of a chest cold or something because I feel like garbage. You know, that's no, no fun at all. No, no, it's not. It is not. But I'm looking at a picture of Baby Yoda, so that makes everything a little better. Right? It's like, oh, you're, you're terminally ill here's a picture of baby yoda that's going to cure you right away it, <laughs> it works every it time go, 10 out of 10 i don't i don't know if it'd go that far okay 60 percent of the time it works every time now you're just starting to sound like ron burgundy well, it wasn't ron burgundy that said that it was uh one of his friends but sure. yeah i don't i don't remember i've seen that movie once <laughs> enough to say that i can say that i've seen anchorman and that's all anyone could ever ask. So, I'll probably never watch it again in my life. But I have seen it once. So, well, what have you been playing this week? Well, I could talk about what I've been playing, which, uh, if from the intro you didn't already figure it out, uh, Jack and Daxter. See, if, if I had just listened to that intro not knowing anything about Jack and Daxter, I thought you were talking about Halo or something. Well, it's definitely better than the intro you originally had on there. Yeah, well, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, for PG reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Jack and Daxter um, game series I've been interested in for a while. I played Jack 2 back on the PS2 sometime after it came out. I don't know if I got out on release date or anything, or if I even cared at that point. But, I mean, this was back in college, so a lot's happened since then. Yeah. And I don't have that game anymore, but I, I remembered I got the collection on uh, PS4, the, the digital collection. So, PS2 games on PS4, if that makes any sense. Did they up them? Is uh, that what... There's uh, some work done on that, yeah. Okay. And it does not work in the best favor some of the times because of the way it's rendering uh, distance and stuff. But it's, it's functional, so that's... I mean, I, I, it, it didn't hamper any of the gameplay for me, I should say. I guess being functional is probably the most important part. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's just like maybe like... The only, the only thing it really did was like, okay, the train five feet around me is fully rendered. 
and then everything beyond that is like slightly lower in the rendering chart yeah but it it was never anything where it's like just completely unrendered or just a color or anything like that which is why it's not too big of a complaint are they ever going to actually do like spyro remasters of those games do you think I don't know. I was kind of there... hoping we would have more uh, Ratchet and Clank remasters. I would be down for that. Because that's another uh, just much just like Jack and Daxter, that's another one where I've uh, played games that are later in the series and not the first one. Yeah. I think, yeah, I've, those only, are... I think I've only played two ja uh, Ratchet and Clank games, honestly. Yeah, and I'd like to go back and play the Ratchet and Clank games, but I don't want to go and pick up, you know, pick them up on PS2 or whatever. Right. I'd rather play remastered versions of them on modern systems. Yeah, and all this, I mean, Jack and Daxter that that was that would be more than, uh, more than, uh, what I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It it it, it needs a remaster. There we go. Is this was Jack and Daxter Naughty Dog? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. I forget, is Naughty Dog owned by Sony that's, now? Uh, I believe so. Don't hold me to that. But I seem to remember them uh, going under the Sony umbrella at this point. I I'm double-checking really quick. Yeah, so, Sony acquired Naughty yes, Dog yes. earlier this year. I think it was earlier this year. Yes. I was thinking it's either Naughty Dog or that other... Uh, Insomniac games. Yeah. Do they the, own? They, do they own Insomniac? That's Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. Do they own Insomniac games? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I don't know. So many of these studios get bought by other. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. Sony to acquire Insomniac Games. This is August yep. 2019. There you go. Okay. Cool. So why have we not seen Jack and Daxter make a return? Oh well. Uh they've been busy working on The Last of Us. Hmm. Let's anyway, see. uh what uh, what's gonna happen is during The Last of Us two, you're gonna go and you're gonna find like a TV set somewhere, and if you turn the TV on, it's gonna play a trailer for Jack and Daxter remastered. That would be really cool. Wouldn't that be a fun way to announce a new game? It would. <laughs> The whole friendly rivalry between Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, just... I'd be all for that, really. And then they're going to have a crossover where Jack and they Daxter could. meet Ratchet and Clank. They could even make, like, a co-op based game. Oh, man. Uh, I'm getting my hopes up for something that's never going to happen. Yeah, it's never going to happen, but it's fun to, fun to think about it. There is a lot of Ratchet and Clank games, whereas Jack and Daxter, it's like, five that's it well i think uh ratchet and clank were a little more popular i wonder why <laughs> so yeah uh, jack and daxter uh uh i got a little bored after the dawning update for destiny 2 hit so i was like i'm gonna download this and play it a little bit i guess and I cleared out like the first area and it said I I did like twenty four percent of the game. Yeah. I was like, oh. Well So it's apparently I guess very I'm short. all in on this. <laughs> <laughs> and um five days later, I actually this morning I got the platinum trophy on it. Nice. And all I did was beat the game. Hun like I hundred percented it, but still that I mean, it's a collect-a-thon, so of course I'm going to go out of my way and do everything on there. Yeah. Which uh, led into me starting up Jack 2, because they decided to drop the whole Daxter part. Oh, you are all in on this franchise now. You're just going to marathon them all. Well, I mean, I, uh, oh gosh. I don't have a physical copy of uh, Daxter anymore, or digital. That was the PSP exclusive. Yeah. I guess I might have to do something about You're going that. to eBay later. Sure. 
<laughs> totally not doing anything illegal. Don't don't do. Oh yeah, you would never do that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I own the game. I don't know where it's at, and I'm not going to play it on a PSP. Oh, why would you ever want to do that? <laughs> I'll find a way to play it on my Vita TV. There you go. Those don't have a PS Store or the, yeah play, the PlayStation Store anymore, do they? What the Vita? The, yeah. I don't know if you can still access it or not. Hmm. Well, I probably can to download, but I don't think there's anything you can buy on there anymore. Anyway, who cares? It'll, it's a problem I've already solved somewhere, so that's the thing. There you go. Future Ethan solved a problem that Pat, current Ethan needs. Uh, so. Got the Platinum, went right into Jack 2, and I don't remember playing that game, but I just remembered, like, the start of it. <laughs> Maybe that's all you ever played. No, I, I, I do know I beat the game. I don't, I don't think I did 100%, or, and Platinum Trophies didn't exist back then. But, you know, I'm going to work on it. And uh, speaking of working on things i uh i bought some arcade machines today you sure did you like jumped head first into this arcade machine owning venture <laughs> you know i still think micah thinks i'm a little too far into it and it's like dude i spent 200 and got all this i don't <laughs> it, yeah it, you're it, not you're like... not in that much it's like $33 an item. It's not going to murder me or anything on this. It's just me. Have You know, I, I would have been happy with owning just one arcade game. I got six. Well, yeah. five. Four. Well, okay, four. Well, and you don't know exactly how much each of them are. You know, how much in working order each of them are. Exactly. So, if if it's something that ends up being like something you can't repair you're not out that much money and you could say you could probably sell a bunch of those things for parts and get your money back easily oh yeah totally what'd you end up getting all right we'll just go down the list here the the uh probably best condition one that i have in all this and the oldest is millipede i think this was the sequel to centipede right yeah thing with the trackball so I'm really happy to have that. It's this one is actually the it's all original from what I can tell. Uh, trackball is a little rough on it. I don't know if the if the cabinet even works. I didn't have time to plug them in, especially after you move six arcade level items in several in a couple hours. You're just kind of sick of it at that point. So got millipede. Got Mega Man. Uh, I forget what it is. Mm, you know what? Let's look it up. Mega Man Arcade. It is Mega Man: The Power Battle. I have no clue what that is. I, th I think this is what I got: The Power Battle. Supposedly, it's like Mega Man Three or something. I I, I don't I don't really know. Um, pretty sure that one's gonna work. Uh, whenever I plug it in, it it's not original. It's not the in the original case. I can tell by the stuff on the side because it's not Mega Man. But I do have high hopes for it. Yeah. Uh, the one that I really hope works, because I've always wanted to own a copy of this, is Area Fifty One. Yeah, I really hope that one works. That's a really fun game to play. It, it's one of those where I would. It's like I could go to an arcade, play fighting games or whatever. No, I'm gonna go to the gun con stuff and shoot at a screen fighting aliens. And supposedly there's a thing I can do to put the sequel on there or something, but I'd have to buy the part. Not sure if I'm willing to go that far. Um, then I bought Carn Evil. Uh, spooky. Uh shooter uh like uh light gun game. Yeah, I recognize the name, but I don't really know anything about it. It's one of those I was always too scared to play in the arcades. 
it was like next to House of the Dead. So, you know, spooky clowns and stuff. And it's, it, I recall it was a three player game. Like, you had two with the handguns and one with the shotgun. And this one's a mm-hmm. two player version only. And it was probably the most complete uh, looking thing outside, aside from Millipede. But it was also the heaviest and probably slightly larger than the rest. Yeah. God, I think it was crazy. Um, and then we have the two uh, sad parts of what I bought. The sad parts? Yes. Tekken 4, it doesn't have the uh, controller panel for it, so there's no oh, way no. To, there's nothing I can actually play on there. And I don't know if it even works, but if the computer stuff in there works, I'm I'll be happy with that. And also, it has a CD drive on it, so it's like, oh, I wonder what I can do with this now. Yeah, there's no telling. And the last one, I I was so excited for this. I thought it was a Scarface uh, uh, pinball table. But it was just a... uh, a Someone put a poster. These two things were, like, kind of surrounded by stuff, so... I didn't take too hard a look. I was like, oh, I want those. And then it's like, okay, these items, these. So then you take a look and it's like, oh, we're trying to load these up and they're not good. So the Scarface one was just some other generic looking pinball table thing with a someone had put a Scarface poster on the scoreboard thing, cut out a section. Yeah. Yeah. So... Not a complete loss. It's still a pinball table. If it works, that's cool. I need to open it up and clean up the insides a bit, but that's about it. Yeah. And we've got some friends who are big into pinball, so they could probably help you identify that table. Yeah, I sure hope so. It seems very simple and childish almost from the design yeah. on there. I didn't take any... I only took two pictures, posted them on my Twitter, and they're just of the first two, uh, Area 51 and Meg... Yeah, Area 51 and Mega Man... Uh, like I said, we it was one of those things where it's like, here's the pic. I took two pictures. I was sick of dealing with them after moving them. So yeah, that was the excitement for my day. Platinum trophy, Platinum. buying six arcade level pieces of machine, and then uh, starting Jack too. Well, that sounds like a pretty eventful day. I know it's crazy. Like. Didn't you? Was this the same person you had talked about? Maybe they had had a Pac Man. They did. I know who they bought sold it. it. I know who bought it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was sold to a. It's it's like a little hamburger shop is in the back of this place, but it's mostly ah. a, a place for kids. Yeah. Like uh, there's all kinds of stuff they can do there. Was it a stand-up Pac-Man or a, one of the cocktail tables? It was a stand-up. If it had been a cocktail, I don't think they would have bought it. Or they would have, but they wouldn't have used it yeah, there. I'd have bought it. <laughs> oh, dude, I would have been all over that. That's the one arcade machine I really, really want is a Pac-Man cocktail table. So I looked up the Mega Man game to see exactly what it was, and I do remember this game. I've never actually played it, but I've seen some video of it. Okay. Um, and in that game, you pick... You start out by picking your character. You can be either Mega Man, Proto Man, or Base. Yeah, Mega Man, Proto Man, or Base. Yeah, they're and then in that. after after that you pick one of three different what it calls stories, and those stories are either Mega Man One and Two, Mega Man Three, Four, and Five, and then Mega Man Six, I think, or maybe it's Three and Four, and then Five and Six. Um, <clears throat> but it breaks up in those three separate stories. Okay, so it's Mega Man 1 and 2, Mega Man 3 through 6, and then Mega Man 7. And oh, okay. um, once you've picked your story, it then randomly chooses a level for you. And the, all the level is is just a fight against the bosses from the game. You don't actually go through it. it just It's just boss fight the game oh, is what it is. Okay. It's not um, bad. So, so you just play through the boss fights of the different Mega Man games and then, you know, gain their powers and then you can use them against the subsequent bosses. Hmm. Okay. So, and it was an arcade game first and then it came to PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. Came out in 95 originally. Yep. 
Neat. So there you go. If that works, that'll be a fun little game to play. Yeah. Look forward to seeing if this one works, though. So, all right. Is that it for you this week? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> So, I have been playing a brand new game for the Switch this week. It's no a free-to-play way. game. No way. Yeah, I'm big into the free-to-play games all of a sudden. Um, Paladins 2. <clears throat> no, not Paladins 2. That's not out yet. Okay. Uh, so, uh, no, it's a game I've played before on the PlayStation. Uh, Dauntless finally came to the Switch this week. Oh. Um, during Nintendo did a oh I guess we should talk about that stuff. Um, Nintendo did a indie direct, and during that indie direct, they announced that Dauntless was going to be available later that day, and uh, I downloaded it immediately, and then started playing cool. later that night. Um, so when I logged in, when I well, when I turned the game on, I booted it up, and it automatically found my uh, Epic Games account. And it just attached it there, pulled all my stuff from the PlayStation over, and I had all of my equipment, all of my quests, all of the hunts I had done. It was all right there. Uh, there is one set of Switch exclusive items that you can get in the game from the eShop for free. You just go and download them and they attach it to your account. And then you switch back to your PS4 and play with them there. <laughs> you can, actually. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, you have to have a switch. You can't go to like the eShop on the website. You have to actually log into the eShop from a switch to get these switch exclusive items, but then you can use those on whatever console you play the game on. Um, it, it's a set of cosmetic armor and then cosmetic skins that you can use. So uh, those are available for anybody for free on the Switch. Just download them for free. You can use them wherever. Cool. Um, I then also noticed later on, or that maybe it was the next day, that there was some PlayStation Plus exclusive Dauntless items oh, that no. I didn't have. So I downloaded the PlayStation Plus exclusives. It's just a uh, set of weapon skins, um, which basically give your things these like blue metallic blades or the head of your hammer turns into this blue metallic material. Hmm. Uh, I don't remember what they're called, but that's all that's all it does really is it just it makes whatever weapon you're using look like this blue metallic weapon. And then I noticed that those PlayStation Plus exclusive items work on the Switch. Mwahaha. <laughs> So, it seems like what I don't know what Epic has done because this didn't it didn't do this with like Fortnite. Any PlayStation Plus exclusive stuff that I got in Fortnite, I could not use on the Switch. Um, but they've either made some kind of deals or something is working in the background to where any, any platform exclusive stuff you have, have for Dauntless works on whatever platform you're playing. Hmm. Um, which is really nice. <clears throat> the only thing that's really bad about um, armor skins that I've noticed is that for some reason there's one piece of clothing that I, that does not display correctly on the Switch. It's the, this it, they call it the Desperado cloak. It's like you know the you know like Clint Eastwood in the Quick and the Dead or whatever that movie was that he wears that a duster. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's got fur around the the collar, and I think around the bottom of it. And Ooh, fancy, um, <clears throat> booting up and playing on the Switch version that doesn't show. Well, it's it's just this generic jacket looking thing. I can't really describe it, but it's not what it's supposed. To be. Contacted the developers, and they haven't ever gotten back to me about why this particular item doesn't look the way it's supposed to on the Switch when it does on every uh, and it's not just for my display if like somebody else you're playing with in the game is playing on another 
it displays the incorrect item there. But if they're playing on a PS4 or a PC, it displays the piece of clothing. Okay. So it's really weird. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if it's just something that the for some reason the Switch can't handle it and they've had to remove that piece of clothing or what. Oh, that's but why I'd just really attached like to, to like g- the generic coat for now because of mm-hmm. uh, rendering issues. But I'd really like to know because it's one of my favorite pieces of clothing and I like my character to wear it. That's fair. Um, but uh, gameplay is where you know is the most important aspect of this. And how's that and, handling? Uh, it's good and bad in places. Um, you know, if you've never played Dauntless before, what you do is when you first boot up the game, you're launched into this this hub tutorial. area. <laughs> well, aside from the tutorial. Okay. Um, so you're launched into this hub area. Monster Hunter has the same type of thing with Monster Hunter um, on the PlayStation 4 uh, where you have you know shops and other players running around and and things like that and that is pretty sluggish on the switch uh, there's a lot of uh, frame skipping uh, low frame rate issues uh, on the switch in the in the hub area specifically I did notice though that if you turn down motion it sort of improves the frame rate a little bit okay so if you're playing on the switch turn the turn the motion blur all the way down it doesn't affect gameplay really in any way personally i like games without the motion blur so um it's it's a small thing to get rid of to boost the frame rate a little bit it doesn't fix it completely but it does make it a little better Uh, inside hunts though however once you launch a hunt and you're out in the the map area for whatever hunt you're doing the game runs perfectly uh there's a few stutters here and there but not anything that's going to affect your gameplay and it's mainly when you first launch into it it takes it a couple of seconds to kind of um but then after that it works really well so if you have a switch and you're curious about the game at all, you might download it and give it a shot. I think it's five and a half in size. Uh, it's feature complete with every other version of the system. Uh, I mean, with every other version of the game on every other system. So you're not missing anything on the Switch. You're getting everything that everybody else is getting. Uh, it's got cross-play with all other systems. PS4, PC, Xbox One. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. And then that cross-save functionality as well. So, so anything that you earn in any version of the game, you'll immediately see if you boot up the game on another system. Okay. Um, and it's it's a really it's a fun little you know Monster Hunter style game. If you're curious about Monster Hunter at all, and you've never played that game, and you think it's really an, uh, you know an intimidating prospect to get into, this one is a little bit more friendly to new players, I think, than Monster Hunter is. Uh, so you can kind of get your feet wet a little bit and see what the Monster Hunter thing is all about. Or just play uh, Monster Hunter World on PlayStation like a boss. You could do that too. I mean, that 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 is an option. Um, but if I want to play with anybody else in my house, I have to play uh, Dauntless because nobody else can play Monster Hunter if I'm playing. So uh, there's that. Uh, and then with this new... The day that it launched on Switch was also the start of their next um, gameplay season, which lasts two months. Uh, they introduced a new Battle Pass, which has some cool items in it. Uh, they did a bunch of sort of quality of life improvements. So now when you're in the hub world, up in the top right corner, you can see all of your quests and you just um, you can bumper through them to see what they are and and activate one from there. You don't have to go into to do that. Um, so just hitting the left and right bumpers will scroll through all of the quests that you have, and you can activate whichever. Okay. Um, what else have they done? Uh, I can't think of any of the other sort of quality of life improvements right off the top of my head. They did add a new gameplay mode, which is so much fun. It's called I think it's called Escalation. And what it does is it drops you and your hunting party into a 
hunt. And it's basically just quick fire boss fight after quick fire boss fight. Um, so you go in and you fight a low level monster and get all you know loot from killing that monster. And then once you've killed it, this crystal drops from the sky and it gives you some sort of power up. Like it will give you the ability to give it every hunter in your party a shield for 20 seconds or it will boost your attack speed or other things like that and then mm -hmm. that carries over into the next and then once you've done that it opens up the next area you go into the next one and fight another boss or another monster and sometimes it'll be two monsters at once so you got both of them there that you're having to try to fight and they're slightly more difficult than the previous monster you fought do the same thing. Get your bon you get your bonus and all of these stack. So every time you kill a monster, you've got another bonus that you're stacking on top. So by the time you're done, you're pretty powerful. And we the one that we did, you, it was four rounds. It was one monster, two monsters, one monster, two monsters. Um, and then once once you're done, it gives you all the loot from everything you've done. All of your experience from everything you've done, all of that counts towards your battle pass and all that. So uh, it was so much fun to get in there and play that. And then there's also now these bonuses. You can actually go into the hub world and craft new items that will give you slightly less powerful versions of these buffs that you're getting in the escalation mode that you can use in regular so uh, and i think it's something that you equip onto like your weapon or your armor or something like that hmm. so you get these equipable bonuses that you can then make it a little bit easier to hunt some of the monsters that are maybe giving you some uh, and that's probably my new favorite mode in that game that was incredibly fun to play so uh i am digging the new update to dauntless and i have gone back and forth and played on both playstation and um, and it's been pretty seamless aside from the fact that some of the buttons are a little different um so if i if my fingers are used to you know cycling through menus and stuff with the a button in one place on the switch i then have to remember i'm playing on a playstation controller and if you do that it backs you out of the menu that you're in instead of accepting whatever you're trying to do hmm. so but for the most part, perfectly seamless. It works really, really nicely. Uh, so I expect I may be playing a little bit more Daunt here, here in the... Um, <coughs> sorry. And I am still also plugging away at Paladins. I made it to level 48 on the Battle Pass now. Two levels away from getting uh, my, uh, my Gunslinger skin for Tyra. Who is my paladin's main, and uh, completing a battle pass for the first time in a game ever, I think. So that'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, that is all that I have been playing this week. So let's take a quick break. We will come back and we will talk about the news. Okay, so uh, this week there was a bunch of stuff that that happened. Uh, I think oh it was yeah, there was. I think it was was it Tuesday that both Nintendo and Sony did video presentations. Sounds about right. Um, it started off during uh, at eight o'clock in the morning with Sony's state of play, and uh, it was a twenty minute long presentation. I'll just go through some of the highlights. I pay attention to the entire thing, but I. I saw some of the, the big important bits. Uh, they started off with Untitled Goose Game. will be coming to the PS4 About this time. week. So I think that mean, means... Means peace was never an of, option. That's true. Uh, <laughs> it, also, it also gets rid of the Switch exclusive exclusivity for consoles. Um, it's had a good run on the Switch, but uh, both PlayStation and Xbox will be getting it this week. Uh, it's 20 bucks on PlayStation, and Xbox Game Pass 
subscribers free. get it for free. Uh, otherwise, you have to pay 20 bucks for it on it. But it is coming to Game Pass as well as PS4 this week. Uh, they showed off a little bit of Spellbreak, which is a game I'm actually really interested in. It's a battle. It's another battle royale game, uh, uh, similar to Fortnite, but you don't use guns. You use spells. You use spells. You are a wizard, <laughs> um, and your name is Harry. No, I don't. I mean, I guess you could name your character Harry, but uh, you, you are. It is not a Harry Potter game, unfortunately. I am uh, I am really interested in playing it though. You get a spell, so you throw spell books at people. <laughs> That'd be okay. Just, I, just I would actually like that. It's like just throw the book at them. It takes place in a library, and you just throw books. At them. <laughs> uh, Dreams got a release date, an actual release date. I think it's in uh, early access right now. But uh, Valentine's Day, twenty twenty, you'll be able to play Dreams. So which I've seen some videos of some stuff that people are already doing super creative things with uh, the Dreams beta, but uh, it will be officially launching uh, on February 14th. Is that the one where people are like, making their uh, like recreating games or something in those? Yeah. God, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah, and then you can make your own uh, games as well. So, But let's be honest, we want to play Super Mario RPG on PlayStation 4. I mean, yeah, that somebody's going to do that. You know they are. Oh, uh, I could play Fortnite in Dreams. <laughs> Without, and could, no one would ever know. Or you could just download Fortnite if you really wanted to play Fortnite. No, 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 because then that means I have to play Fortnite. That's true. That is the da uh, oh, downside to ooh, wanting to play ooh, We could get Bullet Witch. Hey, if someone made Bullet Witch and made it better in Dreams, I would buy that in a second. <laughs> uh, showed off a quick trailer for Predator Hunting Grounds. That's a thing. Uh, it is a thing. Uh, the newest game from Platinum Games was showed off as well. It's called Babylon's Fall. I, I was trying to think of the name for a second. And, and I got it, stuck on Scalebound for some reason. No, not Scalebound. It is what you would expect, though. It is like a character action style. It's Bayonetta... Uh, that other one with the robot, whatever that is. I can't remember it right now. Vanquish? No, no, no. The one that nobody can pronounce. Or everybody pronounces it differently. With B2 or whatever her name is. 2B, that's her oh, name. Oh, Near Automata. That game. Yeah, that game. Near Automata. Near Hanamanapia. Near I don't a tomato. Know what it is. I would like to be near a tomato right now. Don't be weird, Tony. <laughs> I would eat it. Because I'm hungry. And this is why we have the movie Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> there you go. There's your, uh, what, late 70s, early 80s pop culture reference. Hey, there you go. I don't even think it was pop culture. <laughs> and Resident Evil 3 remake was officially shown off. The internet's worst kept secret. Yeah. My internet I would... at Capcom, sorry. And everybody has been going nuts over the character redesigns for the the Jill. new the new Jill model um, and the new Carlos model. People, a lot of people I've seen oh yeah, they really like that as well. So, and uh, apparently it's going to come with uh, Resistance. I think is what it was. Resident Evil Project Re Resistance. That thing. Thank you. The mul the, the 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 four versus one thing. Yes, yeah. and. There is also an update to Resident Evil 2, or going to be an update? One of those. I forget if it's already come out or not, where you can uh, in encounter something Jill did, or did in 3, because 3 takes place, like, before 2? But at the same I time? It, oh, okay, it starts before 2, but ends about the same time 2 does, I think is what it was. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know the whole timeline for Resident Evil. The, there's like a whole day that Jill's asleep or something. Has when does Mila Jill? Never. She doesn't exist. Oh, okay. And then Sony ended the uh, state of play with a new trailer for Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Not sure how Still... to feel about that game. 
Still no release date as of Tuesday, so... Definitely better than their E3 showing of that uh, last year. There was almost nothing that they showed off during E3, wasn't there? A uh, guy playing the flute. Yeah, and... there was the guy playing the flute. And a boring conversation that meant nothing to anyone because it's like we don't have anything to go off of other than Japanese culture. We know there are samurai. Samurai and uh, the guy, I think he's like a ninja being a samurai. I don't know. You can't be both. That's not possible. Samurai turned ninja. I guess that's true. Also, it worked for Samurai Jack. Did it? There was a whole episode. Never... <laughs> there was a whole episode where he's fighting a ninja. The guy's hiding in the black of the shadows. So he's like, "All right, fine." Puts his like readjusts his white robes, and then he's like decked out in all white, like a ninja of, of the light. So he hides in the light, fighting the ninja in the shadows of the black. Oh, it, it was very monochromatic for an episode. And then let's see. Later that day. Nintendo had their Nindy World, what do they call it? Indie World. Uh, they're not calling them Nindies anymore, I guess. It's Indie Worlds. Well, I'm going to call them Nindies because it's still Nindies. So, I like Nindies better. I, I know why they're not calling them Nindies. It's because some of them are coming to other consoles and stuff, so it's like, it's not a Nindy. It, it's not a Nindy, it's, it's an Indy. Yeah. If it's a Nintendo exclusive Indy, it can be a Nindy, but nothing else. Uh, they showed off just a bunch of trailers for that, um, including Dauntless, which I had talked about earlier. The Talos Principle was shown off. Hmm. Uh, the, the Survivalists, which is a new adventure set in the Escapist universe. Oh. Uh, with four-player local and online multiplayer. <clears throat> uh, sequel to Golf Story will be coming next year. Mm-hmm. Um, called Sports Story, and it adds golf, tennis, uh, has dungeons, is what they say, and espionage. So, Ooh. I guess you get to be a spy who plays golf. <laughs> I had to play from inside a cardboard box. And people are like, what's that? Oh, it's just a box. It's just a box. Uh, Streets of Rage 4. Okay. Showing off. Uh, let's see. A new game called Gleamlight, which looks really interesting. It's got a cool stained glass look to it. <clears throat> um, and you play as a sword. You play as a what? A sword. Okay. But you are the sword in the player's hand. So, uh, interesting twist. Uh, and that's actually coming from D3 Publisher... They worked on Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. They did. So, uh, One that I think a lot of people are interested in. Uh, there's going to be tons of jokes about it. Skatebird. Skatebird. A lot of, I've seen a lot of people calling it the next Tony Hawk. Which, you know. Okay, I didn't see, the, see this. I mean, I saw a picture of Skatebird. And he made the joke earlier. But did they play Surfing Bird during that part? Uh, I don't know. Well, that song better be on that game. Let me read you the description of what Skate Bird is. According to Nintendo, from the look at these cute little birds shred. Whether they're grinding on bendy straws, kick flipping over staplers, or carving lines through a park held together by sticky tape, Skate Birds always try their best. And look adorable doing. So, this is a this is a it's exactly what it it says. It is a bird skateboard, very much like the tone. It really needs surfing bird for the theme song. So that way, it's like everybody everybody's heard about the word, and bird is a word. the The other big game that was shown off during that was Odd World Strangers Wrath. Oh yeah, forget that game exists sometimes. It will be out in January on the Switch, and you can pre-purchase. Um, they've up. Uh, this says they've updated the first-person controls and added gyroscopic aims. Gyroscopic. 
Gyro aiming. Cool. So. Uh, it was probably about 20 minutes, I think, as well for the uh, Nintendo World. Uh, an indie world. Indie world. Gosh. <laughs> they changed the name so often. Um, so, a bunch of indie games coming out as of the day they showed it off through the middle of next year. So, uh, Lots of cool stuff coming to the Switch. And then, on Thursday, the, bum, bum, bum. the day everybody was waiting for. The darkest the day of the year. The Game Awards happened, or as I like to call it, Jeff Keighley talking for three hours and occasionally saying a game won an award. He talked for like, yeah, it was like three hours. It was a long show. And I and think you left actual, early. <laughs> I did. No, no, I stayed through the end. Did you? I, I ended up staying through the end. I It was right before they announced, I think, game of the year that I was okay. like, okay, you know what? I'm done. Um, because we all hear... know that the game that deserved to win won. I did hear what the game of the year was. So and we'll get to that after we get through the rest of the list. So yeah, this show was what, two and a half or three hours long. It started and the... at 7... Was it 7.30 and ended at 10.30? Yeah, it was a long show. And... Most of the awards were kind of done rapid fire. Give you this this category. They list the nominees and then announce it right then. And there was a Jeff few where Keely it's would... like, oh, they're already on stage accepting this award, and they're like, oh, they also won this award. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. It's just mentioned in so, passing. It's like, oh, what, way to be a jerk. There was about very it. there was very little actual award during the award show. Um, it was mostly just listening to developers pitch their new games after a trailer was shown off. The Game Awards so. have changed, man. So let's see. Dur there were some interesting announcements, though. I'm not a ton of like earth-shattering announcements. At least not anything that I thought was earth-shattering, with the exception of one. Um, what we I guess we could get through those right now. Um, let's see. In reverse, we'll just do it in reverse alphabetical order from what I see here. Okay. Uh, because the one that I'm most interested in is the first one in alphabetical order. Uh, the Wolf Among Us 2 was uh, officially announced. Yeah. Uh, from Telltale. What, what is Telltale now? Um, New it's Telltale, not, so it's not the yeah. original ch team anymore. So if you really like the first one, well, let's hope the second one's really good because... It's not the same people. Might have some no. of them, but not all of them. Uh, a game called Weird West, which is like a top-down shooter. What, wait, what did I call it? It was a Red Dead Diablo. Yes, that is what, and that's a, essentially what it is. Um, it is a Diablo-style game set in the Wild West, but there are monsters and all kinds of weird stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Ultimate Rivals: The Rink which is a sports game that some weird looking neon graphics. Um, I'm not entirely sure what to think of it. I don't even have that on my list. Uh, Surgeon Simulator 2. That was one I was happy about. Also, I thought it was... It was uh, just, I gotta say, whenever you announce a game and you have a link to the website... What was that? <laughs> Sorry, uh, apparently my phone was not muted. That's huh. my text notification. <laughs> so whenever you announce a game in like a big public event such as the Game Awards, and you have a teaser website listed for people to go to to sign up for information, maybe make sure the website's uh, working. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Uh, I actually thought it was a different game, um, like Two was, Points Hospital. I think is what it I. It was so weird because it's like, why are the <laughs> why is this weird nerd guy cloned all over the place doing this? And it's like, oh, that's Nigel because that the reveal at the end. It's like Surgeon Sim Two. So, okay. A uh, game that we were very confused about. Could they even actually show on TV? 
Uh, Sons of the Forest? Uh, this is a prequel? To, oh, yeah, probably a prequel to The Forest. And I'm surprised they showed some, what they could. <laughs> there was some very suggestive stuff going on during that trailer. All the Forest uh, itself, uh, whatever, yeah. Uh, oh gosh, the next one comes with the announcement or the official reveal of a new system. So, uh, yeah. The Project Scarlet is no longer called Project Scarlet. Oh gosh. It is now the Xbox Xbox Series X is what it's called. Or the Xbox, what I said, the Xbox SX for short. Because you know that's what people are going to do. So it's like, did no one consider the name? In fact, the current generation, the Xbox One, has been. It was immediately called Xbone, yes. and here we go, another one, and it was immediately. <laughs> oh, and apparently it it's uh. It has a different name in Japan from how the way series translates over over there. Really? Yeah, I've already forgotten what it is. I'd have to find it again, but uh, it's um, it's not it's not any better. So, but not only did we get the official name of the system, uh, the Series X, we also know what the system looks like, and it the cube pulled on the top of it till it was about three times. And, and that's what it is. It's a tower. It is basically a mini PC, is what it looks like. Well, I'm, I mean, that's basically a console. That's true, um, but it does have that sort of, you know, PC tower look to it now. It, it does, and it's a very simplified design as well. In fact, it looks like it's a matted finish on there too, which that yeah. that's really good. Just open with a matte finish, because. It, it, uh, <laughs> I'm really sick of everyone with all their shiny gloss system launches and say, like, I'm going to get fingerprints all over that. Yeah. Um, a matte system would definitely be the way to go. Quit doing the glossy systems. Especially uh, with your portables. It's about as wide as the uh, SX controller, uh, which also has a slightly new form factor. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and it's pro it looks like it's it's about three controllers, so. Three controllers. Um, hmm. Yeah, it, that that's what it looks like from the pictures. If you take the and you copy and paste three of them on top of each other, it's about that tall. Okay. Uh, it's got a green light on the top where the exhaust fan is. The entire top of it is just an exhaust port, and it's got a green light that shines inside there. Uh, people are already wanting to Photoshop red ring into that green <laughs> just red tower of light just pours out of the top <laughs> uh, and then the, the new Xbox controller is slightly different from the Xbox One controller uh, Phil Spencer said it's a little bit a tiny bit than the current controller and it looks like it borrows the D-pad from the Elite controller good which is that sort of... That was a, a better circ- D-pad. It's like a circular sort of thing, isn't it? It was like uh, a caved in... It, it was caved in, but circular, but angular at the same time, if that... On the yeah. like, the the areas on there that you'd press down. But it was, in, generally, in general idea, a better D-pad. But then again, the Xbox... Uh, the Xbox One X... Wait, I have one. The updated controllers they released, just the general ones, the D-pad's already pretty good on those. Yeah. Um, I like the D-pad that I have on, that's on my Xbox One controller. Um, I think it's an older controller. But... It's an older controller, but it checks out. It ch- checks out. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> and, and then to go along with this, they... Uh, Showed off Sinwa's Saga Hellblade 2. Yeah. I haven't played the first one, so I can't make any kind of judgment on whether I would be excited about this game or not. It's like, oh, it looks pretty, I guess. It does. 
the the first game. I, I don't care about the second one. I don't care about the first one either. Uh, there were two different League of Legends games shown off. Uh, the first one's Ruin King. The second one was Convergence. Sounds right. Uh, these are spinoff games that I think um, star the characters from League of Legends in their own games. Good. Now we can see why they're legends. So, yeah, these are sort of spinoff side stories. It's like, what makes this, the... these characters heroes? Exactly. Why should I give a crap about them? Uh, there's a game on here called Path of the Warrior. I don't remember seeing this one. Path of the Warrior. Hold on. Where? Gosh, there's a lot of stuff announced. <laughs> there was a there was a lot. Um, of stuff. I don't have that on my list. Um, so okay, I can't really tell you much. Cool. Uh, nine to five, which that, is a new battle royale game. I. I I like the way they did this one. Just on the advertisement alone. Uh, well, the trailer started with what looked like a weird sort of... Um, they, for, it was Fortnite style, but it was done in this cutesy like, pastel... Animal. Yeah. Anthropomorphic animals were yeah, fighting. You have, you have like a rabbit show up, does like the loser L shape with his hand, and is doing... We'll just call it a Fortnite dance. You know, your little yeah, it victory... Is, it is. Your undeserving victory dance for no apparent reason. And then another rabbit's like, yeah, look at him. He's doing a dance. I'm his friend, LOL. And then this other one shows up. He's like, I'm stylish. And then uh, you have this crappy music playing. And then all of a sudden the screen gets shot up. And uh, then you have... Uh, real, uh, uh, you have guys that are more serious about the way they do this. And they're like, what is this garbage? And... Yeah, it went from this cutesy, weird, anthropomorphic thing to a very serious, almost ultra-realistic... Yes. <laughs> ...dudes shooting each other, so... And um, it's going to be a team-based tactical shooter, 3v3, three-round format with shifting objectives. Yeah. Uh, the alpha is expected to be out sometime next year, and there's no release date just yet. No release date. It's probably 2021 before the full game comes out. Uh, showed off a new Magic expansion, Magic Legends. Oh, did they show that off? Gosh, they hammered that down our throats every time was they could. Everywhere during this event. Um, it's like, I wonder how much Wizards paid them. <laughs> probably a lot. Uh, then we got the first PlayStation 5 game announced. <sighs> and that is Godfall. Yes, yes it is. I'm trying to remember exactly what. I'm, I'm that... trying to. Here it is. It is a, a fantasy action RPG from Gearbox Publishing and Counterplay Games. It's coming to PC via the Epic Game Store next year. And apparently PS5. Uh, trailer gave us a deep voice night. And, or gave us some deep voice nights and uh, gives us a good. Long look at their armor. Uh, it's described as a looter slasher. So instead of a looter shooter, mm -hmm. uh, so you'll be trying to get legendary armor sets, and that's about all we know right now. Yeah. Uh, the show ended with Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez on stage showing. Mispronouncing Tekken. How did they pronounce it? She, Tekken. Oh. I think that's what she did. <clears throat> Uh, and and were, the chat just went nuts on that one. They're like, <laughs> they were actually on stage to announce the game of the year which we'll, winner. We still have not revealed yet. Um, no, we will get to that later. Um, but during their little pre-announcement speech, they talked about Fast and Furious Crossroads, which is a new game coming to consoles. Coming um, away from a PS2 near you. Yeah, it's really rough looking right now, so... Uh, it definitely looks like a PS2 game running on a PS4, but uh, yeah, there's still time. God, Vin Diesel looks so weird in that game, too. And then Vin Diesel teased the fact that he's seen the new trailer for Fast 9, but they didn't show it off. And that got a lot of people kind of angry. He's like, oh, I saw the new trailer. It's like, Vin, you were in the movie. Who cares? Uh, 
Uh, or, or, well, he owns the company that makes that series, right? Probably. I'm pretty sure it's him and his sister own that. Uh, they showed off a new Dungeons & Dragons game called Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance. They also showed off a new game that I can't say the name of. Because of the show. PG. I but then it turned no out it was just what... No More Heroes. Oh, okay. Uh... <laughs> uh, the new No More Heroes trailer was a uh, kind of a bait and switch, and it was done really well, in my opinion. Because they're like, here's this thing, we don't know what it is, and and what you're seeing is this 4x3 uh, video of a kid talking to the, uh, taking care of this little alien that he finds. And it, the art style is just screaming Digimon. It, 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 like, if you've seen the movies, Digimon movies, it is just... It, it, it's about that well done. It's just screaming that art style. And then it, they're like... He sends away his little cute friend back to space, and he's like, "The friend's like, I'll be back in twenty years," and he shows up, and he's big, humanoid, weird, and uh, apparently we, they're uh, gosh darn superheroes. <laughs> Keep it PG. I was thinking of, like the best way to say that for a moment, and yeah. so you have. It says, uh, is the, the whole thing was gosh darn heroes. I'm keeping it PG. And it had like fake video game companies. Like it said it was using the uh, Oni Real Engine. Oh my. I think the release date was like 2051 on there and some other stuff. <laughs> I, I actually just noticed, noticed this before the show, too. So, and then uh, while it's got the logo on the screen, uh, Travis touchdowns like he kicks down the sign. He's like, "Oh, you mean a real superhero like me?" <laughs> and so apparently we're gonna have like galactic levels on the the uh, what was it, the assassin ranking stuff. That's what he does, right? Yeah. So it's gonna be a little interesting to see. <clears throat> so, uh, what else did they show off? Uh, there's a new expansion for Warframe, if people are interested in that. And Green Day did a two-song set, all in an attempt to show off their new Beat Saber expansion. They replaced the red cubes with green cubes. They're green now. Uh, yeah, there's a six-song pack of Green Day songs coming to Beat Saber. Welcome to Paradise. So... That is the first song they played during their set. And then the second one, I'd never heard. So that, no that idea It's also it. the first song I heard on the radio whenever I landed in Florida for my senior trip. Yeah? Yeah, it's like while we were crossing a bridge uh, somewhere around Fort Myers. <laughs> and I don't Where? listen to Green Day, so I was like, oh, this song's pretty cool. Welcome to Paradise. Here I am on a senior trip in Florida. In Florida. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's like, of all the timing, too bad this wasn't paradise. <laughs> it's just Florida. It was like the Gulf side, so it wasn't good Florida. It was bad Florida. So those were all the big reveals during the event. Now let's very quickly go through some of the awards. Um, the Player's Voice Award, which was one that was completely run by the fans, according to Jeff Keighley. Well, uh, I mean, people were complaining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and they had four games in that category. There were Smash Brothers, Star Wars, Fallen Order, Death Stranding, and Fire Emblem Three Houses. And this was basically just an excuse for the fans to nominate Fire Emblem for another award, and yep. Fire Emblem won. Of course. Uh, best VR slash AR game was Beat Saber. Okay, uh, worthy. Yeah, That's yeah I, I'm not going to read like the rest of the nominees because. No. Yeah, because we'll be here for a little uh, while, like maybe an yeah. hour reading that, because, I mean, we have to do it uh, Jeff Keighley style. It's true. Best sports game. Yeah, get Kojima sports... on the show. And... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, best <laughs> sports slash racing game went to Crash Team Racing. Just a way to wreck it, guys. Hopes and dreams. 
best sorry best score in music <laughs> um i actually don't agree with this one but it was death stranding really what would you have given it to I would have gave it to either Cadence of Hyrule or... Maybe, oh, yeah, absolutely. Or or maybe Sinar or Wild Hearts, because I think that was based on music for that game. Those were two rhythm games. They exactly. <laughs> Death Stranding, I, I played through that whole game, and honestly, I remember probably none of the songs. Yeah, that, that In fact, the music on that game was almost absent. The Cadence uh, of Hyrule soundtrack was fantastic. That reminds me. Uh, that uh, opening thing where the lady was singing, and I was I kept making fun of her mascara running. Yeah, that was a uh, Death Stranding related. Ah, okay. Like Kojima even designed her. Uh, her outfit. Well, like her makeup and. The, oh, okay. He designed her the way she was supposed to look on stage. Okay. If that makes uh, sense. Best strategy game went to Fire. Fire Emblem, yay! Best role playing game, Disco Elysium. Which, uh, by the way, won the most awards during the event. Spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best family game was entirely Nintendo. Uh, so the best um, Nintendo award. Basically, it was best Nintendo game. Went to Luigi's Mansion. Uh, but yeah. yeah, every single nominee in that was a Nintendo exclusive. I'm sure they'll try not to make that mistake ever again uh best performance was mad oh hold on give me a second to try to say this guy's guy's name right mads mikkels mikkelson mads mikkelson mads mikkelson and that's uh death stranding yeah that would that was absolutely worth um he he, he, he did really really good in that game yeah i've i've seen some of the clips from death stranding of him and he was he was really good in that. All all he wanted was his BB man. <laughs> uh, let's see. Best fighting game was Smash Brothers. Of course. Best ongoing game was not Destiny Two. Was not Final Fantasy Fourteen. <clears throat> it was Fortnite. Yeah. That whatever. Fortnite. Um, right. <laughs> uh, best mobile game went to Call of Duty. <laughs> I'm actually really well. I mean, yeah, you know what? That, okay, that was actually good. I remember the footage on that. It is a good game. Did we already do uh, best narrative? Uh, no, we have not. Best narrative: Disco Elysium. Uh, let's see. We're also reading from two different lists, apparently. We are. Um, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page with the, the awards. Uh, best audio design went to Call of Duty Modern. Yes, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Best multiplayer game, Apex Legends. Not. Um, I kind of thought Overwatch would have gotten that one, but I th think Apex has sort of surpassed it. In, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like popularity. I guess maybe not popularity, but I don't think Overwatch was even on the. No, yeah, it was on there, wasn't it? It was. <clears throat> we done best action game. We have not. Best action adventure game went to Sekiro. Sekiro. <clears throat> best independent game. Disco Elysium. Yep. Uh. Best game direction was Death Stranding. Games for Impact, Gris. Uh, that may be it. Finding uh, family except game. for Game of the Year. Uh, there was also the esports stuff. Who cares? Yeah, nobody. Uh, oh, best content creator went to Shroud. Who? No, I've I've not heard of any of the people in the. Yeah, I don't know any of these people. I'm. It's, it's like it's not. I don't, it's not Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, Eight Bit Ryan. I don't know these people. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of video game content like that on YouTube. Why? So. Why is Rhett and Link not on or here? Twitch. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> best community support, Destiny Two. I mean that. That's a good one. 
It's, it is. Are they? So. Uh, game of the year. The big one. Game of the year. I was uh, not expecting this, actually. I thought this was going to go to Death, Dr- Death Stranding, and it did not. Oh, man. If it did, people would have been so angry. And I think that was just sort of most hyped game of the year would have been Death It really was Stranding. most hyped. Um, it was very much split in terms of the reaction of people that once they had actually played it. So, uh, it's, it's ultimately not surprising that it didn't win. Um, but the nominees were Death Stranding, Control, Resident Evil 2, Smash Brothers, and the, the Outer Worlds, and then the winner. uh, Winner was Sekiro. So... Yep. Well, there you go. And that was the Game Awards this year. And the picture that I saw most circulated after the Game Awards was a dude asleep in the audience. And that was circulating super early on <laughs> during the awards. It was. Um, and then, of course, the jokes about the uh, SX um because the first thing I did when I saw the name was I went to Twitter to see how long it took for the jokes to start, and it was about 30 seconds. And that was just because it took that long for Twitter to load? Probably. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice was the, was the Game Awards Game of the Year. I have not played it. Have you played I haven't Sekiro? finished it. Okay. That is... It's actually fairly tough, in my opinion. Well, it's a From Software game, so... Yeah, but, like, I, I've played the uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne and did all right with those, but this, this is, like, a whole different Next beast. <laughs> like, you, you have your sword, and then you have, like, your arm abilities, and that's that's it. Yeah. So. All right, and then we have one... Listener feedback question this week, and it comes from Nathan via Facebook, who wants to know, what's a game that you like that everyone else seems to hate, or at least dislike? And Ethan... (coughs) Yes, good lord. Uh, You just, in the show notes, put, let's just say Bullet Witch. I did. I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what set off the entire Bullet Witch thing. (laughs) <laughs> is I joined the uh, Nintendo Oki and had to fill out my personal web page, uh, person out, what what was it called? It was just like the About Us. I don't remember Okay, exactly the About Us page. And this was a question on that page, and I was like, Bullet Witch. And then Shelby saw it, he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and we, it, 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 we still don't live it down to this day. Nope. Nope. Bullet Witch is that game that we all love that nobody else does. And it's not a great game, but, you know. Well, I mean, Bayonetta's come out since then. That's true. That's true. I'm waiting for him to do a Bullet Witch sequel. Like, I can, I literally, I can see the the makings of a good game somewhere in there. They just need to... You know, we just need to raise a couple million dollars on Kickstarter, and it'll happen. <laughs> Learn how to develop a game. Uh, <laughs> Learn how to publish a game. We can, it, we can. Making the game is probably just as hard as you think it is. Publishing the game, probably <laughs> way harder than we think it would ever be. Probably. So probably just be easier to make the game and then just throw it on for free online and people would download and play it or just continue to beg the developers for a sequel um i think xseed owns it now i think so xseed get on that please hugs and kisses pg make make bullet witch 2 the witchening So. I, I I hate and love that name at the same time. <laughs> Just like the game. Like, like it goes so well because the, I know the game's going to be bad. <laughs> Just it, get But I hate how well it goes it. with it. <laughs> Just 
just call it Platinum Games and say, hey, give us a Bayonetta spin, but give the witch a gun. And just call it Bullet Witch. Not not no. guns on her feet. Give her a broom that's a gun. Because that would be awesome. Point. Just give her a shotgun that she can fly on. I don't think she can actually fly on them. No, she stands on the top of an airplane and flies. There you go. Like a 747. Bayonetta did that too. Yeah, I think she crashed hers. Well, she wasn't actually attempting to fly it, to be fair. Ooh, ooh, since it's on PC, I wonder if there's like a mod to play as Bayonetta. Oh, you know there's got to be, right? It makes, it, the game's over in five seconds. <laughs> so, well, all right. I am about to lose my throat, so I think it's Me probably too. best So, Nathan, to... there's our answer, Bullet Witch. Bullet Witch is the answer. It is always the answer to every question pretty sure that's what he would have wanted us to say <laughs> well all right thank you ethan for uh being on the show this week yeah uh uh transporting arcade machines can be very dangerous and leave you with splinters in your hands so it's best not to transport them just still leave them where just pay someone else to transport around. them there you go. Gosh. <laughs> Best advice ever. Something me and my dad both agreed on. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. If you want to reach out to us, we have new ways to do so. You can email us at proceduralygeneratedent at gmail.com. If you like what we do, you can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash pgent. Patreon supporters get the video version of the podcast a day early. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash progenint. Check out our YouTube channel, and we still have that famous Facebook group where you can interact with us on a daily basis as well.